Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I am Rex. And so here's the situation we're in right now. Wait, I like. Go ahead. The situation we're in right now is we have, I'm, I'm, which I'm grateful for because yes. I really love this role. We've sort of become the champion of tiny distributed whiskey, small batch craft guys. Well, because the MBs, they're because sending the MB stuff on the behalf of all these small yes. batch. Yes. So that for the last couple of years now, that, that's dominantly what we do. Um, which is cool because I love that we have the ability to point our audience right. at small producers. Well, and what I personally enjoy about it mm -hmm. is in terms of what's developing in the craft scene, mm -hmm. even within the past you know, few years, oh, yeah. I've seen such a dramatic upswing oh, yeah. in the terms of like the quality and the execution of these whiskeys. And it's when just, we first started, I would guess 20% were like, oh, that's really great. And 80% were like, well, not my thing. Yeah, yeah. These days, that's almost reversed. For me, I think it's like 60 40 now. For me, it's about 50 50. Really? But it's a dramatic improvement. Yeah. It's huge. like going in a beautiful direction. And it puts yeah. us in, a, a, I think, a brilliant position of being able to taste the transition of American craft. Oh, yeah. And that's really cool. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. However, I am trying to find some big brands that we can at least, you know, people can get. Yeah. And so I have been like periodically skipping ahead sure. uh, in line if sure. I see one that everybody can get their hands on. However, the person who sent this one in, did not write their name on the bottle. That was me. So if you sent in the Glenlivet Caribbean Reserve, I did it. Please tell me, email me, or put it in the comments. I did it. And we'll bastard you on the next round of video shooting. Otherwise, you just bastard me. I've never been bastarded. Have I been bastarded? I don't think so. Rex and Daniel, you magnificent bastards! <laughs> We totally just mooched a donation. <laughs> uh, this was actually one of the first one of the first whiskey gifts I ever received. Glenlivet. The first first was Ballantines. Yeah. And then the Glenlivet uh, was one. I think I got like gift number two or three. Right. From like my close friends. This was before we were even getting donations. Right. People just knew. Oh, you're starting a YouTube channel. Here's a whiskey. <laughs> yeah, it works. Um, so this is their Caribbean cask. Okay. Now we've had a whole bunch of others, you know, uh, doers did the Caribbean cask yeah. and, oh, oh, by the way, I, own, I, want, I do want to say on that doers, let's try this now, remind me about my doers story. Okay. Um, do we need to re, re-doers? We might need to redo doers We call it the re-doers episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dad joke. Wait, what, um, was it? I do want to compare it to the Glenlivet Founders Reserve because this is the 1824 Caribbean Reserve. Okay. Just and see if there's any overlap. Um, we don't know how long the it's aged in Caribbean rum casks. We don't know how much of it was Caribbean rum cask finished, whether it was a blend. I mean, in theory, some of it did, but yeah. just from the nose, I am smelling candy, hard candy, tropical candy immediately. Yeah, no, it's a very candy, sugary sweetness. I mean, just from across the room, like without even picking it up. And then Glenlivet's usually kind of low on the proof. What do they got? 40% ABV, 80 proof? Yep. But that much sweetness coming out of that low of proof. I'm almost getting like like overripe banana, kind of a. See, I'm getting like a, papaya, like a ground up Smarties. Yeah, that dusty sugar. Yeah, and then there's that maltiness. Mm-hmm. Smells a little thin compared to the higher proof things that we often. Before I sip, I'm gonna pour. Often the reach for founders just to get a nose comparison before I start drinking and it. What's the difference? It's just this rum cask. Finish. I don't know if what the difference is, but this was the my guess at the closest one prior to so rum. They're definitely similar, and I don't know if they do any kind of E150. The the Caribbean cask is slightly darker on the color. Yeah, and they're definitely related. Yeah, this is more like honey coated light fruits. Which one is this? The Glenlivet uh, 1824 Founders. Founders, okay. The Caribbean. Is more like tropical fruit notes. And the sugary sweetness. Yeah. Sugary sweetness for me. And there's like, uh, mm. there's there's just one kind of note that has some elbows pushing out, a little bit more heft to it in the Caribbean cask. So take a sip, and for me, it does this like rounded fruit sweetness with this little like zingy tannic note, dry note. Okay. And then whew, vanishes. You see what I mean? It does switch it up. It's just Round, here. sweet candy, a little bit of a bing. And then, uh, just, mm -hmm. just can't reach it. Reach it. Just reach it. 
I'm gonna go to the Founders. Mm. So, I much prefer the Founders. You like the Founders? Yeah. I like the Caribbean. Um, it's not, I, much is the wrong word. It's 20% maybe right. leaning towards Founders because it the sweetness drops in the Founders and there's more of the malt musty note. Mm -hmm. And that I like that better. There's a, on the Caribbean. Softer. Eh, the Caribbean, there's a little bit more of like this, a little bit more of a thicker, heavier, um, more dense. It's not a caramel. I keep wanting to say caramel. It's no. not a caramel. But it is, it's not a rum either. There's a sweet rubber note in that. Mm. Oh, I can see what you mean. Yeah. Like uh, like a toy. But I Yeah, but I always get that in rum. Okay. Always. Like that's my rum so marker. So you are finding the rum. Yeah. Okay. So it could be psychosomatic. Mm. Oh, what we I... go back to that. Um, after taking a sip of that again, I took some water. Go back and I get some like, like green vegetal notes. Oh no, I don't get that. In the founders. Um, so the Glen Levitt, right? Because I was nursing this mm. thing, like the the nice. very first one of the early gifts. I was right. nursing this thing for like months. Just really small pours and want to make it last as long as possible. It's like who knows whenever get another whiskey gift. <laughs> um, and I got to a point where it's like, ah, it's just kind of like sweet. And I know this whiskey inside and out. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm going to see if I can like blend something. I had a Laphroaig 10. Oh, yeah. Just a few drops. Yeah, that's and all it made, takes. Oh, and it just made it so like complex and interesting. Yeah. And any more than that, then. Son of a bitch. Oh, you saw what I meant, did? Yes, did you just see that? No, I saw it before. I want to know how long it would take you to. Well, to you said Laphroaig, and my brain went, check the corner. To recognize that she tripled, Three. <laughs> tripled down. <laughs> She keeps taking the Log of Ulin's place, rightfully earned place, <laughs> Sweet Jesus. on the wall. And she keeps putting in her her own preferred <sighs> brand there. Uh, I like the Caribbean cask. It's good. I think it adds some uh, some additional layers. They're subtle, right? It's This is a low-proof whiskey. Mm -hmm. You need to be kind of like um, receptive to those things in there. Right. But you can find them. It adds some extra things than, than the, fander, the founders right. in this right. case. Um, and that's originally what I was trying to do with my first Glenlivet was I wanted to add some more layers. This does. It adds a couple layers. They're still just very sweet and friendly layers, though. Yeah. I Look, um, I don't get me wrong. I like it. Yeah. It's a decent drinker. It's not my favorite Glenlivet. Mm -hmm. I actually like the 12 significantly better. I think it's just, you know what? It's a right down the center of home plate, sweet, friendly, malty scotch. And I agree. Then this adds just a, like a subtle layer. It's an accent with the rum cast. Right. They are very similar. Yes. Remarkably similar, but you can pick out that difference. We have JD Mack. Took my wife out for a steak dinner a few nights ago just after watching one of your scotch videos for the first time. I decided to have the most expensive drink on the list. Wow. Log of 16. Oh, well done. Oh, a steak. I had no idea oh. what I was getting into, but it was amazing. Oh. I loved it. You two have created another whiskey convert. By the way, my wife loved it too. Oh, oh two whiskey converts. So we know nothing else about these people, but they go to steak dinners. This, but just on this comment, uh, we know that they're good people. Yes, <laughs> they go to steak dinners and they drink Lagavulin 16. They have to be good obviously people. good people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, this weekend I had Jonathan uh, Licorice made me this steak. And it was like I, the um, iron root distillers yeah. over at iron root. It was like a wagyu. I think it was like a wagyu highest grade, of all kind, yeah. world best. And it was this thin, like eighty percent marbled fat steak oh, wow. thing. Yeah. And he cut it into strips that looked like long, thin strips. Yeah. And he side pan sear grilled each of them instead of out on a char grill. Yeah. Right. It was like if if it was like steak bacon. Ooh. <laughs> I have never. You had steak in? I have never had anything that good in my life. I want steak in. It, all he did was put salt on it. You know, he what, put salt on it. You know, and then I, he pan seared it. You know what I did? And we cut into it, and it was legitimately steak bacon. You know what? I, you know what I did? You know what I did? I waited patiently, just held in my phone, like the whole, all weekend, holding my phone, phone call. waiting for an invitation to go eat steak in. <laughs> that never came. No, no, you were not invited. I, I did not get the invite to the steak. Yeah, ironically, Brandy was there. Is that where she went? <laughs> I 
I gotta run some errands. <laughs> she went to the grocery store and didn't come back with groceries? <laughs> yeah, that's what I figured out. <laughs> Reeking of steak. <steaking. laughs> <laughs> Reeking of... <laughs> I just imagine... <laughs> I just picture you sitting on the couch, Brittany walking in and dropping like her purse down, and you grabbing it and going, You traitor! <laughs> you hussy! <laughs> Where did you get and the steak? Like, it was only four bites! <laughs> uh, Manuel Garcia, greetings. You two are as subtle as a brick through a window. <laughs> Thanks, Manuel. <laughs> I liked that comment. <laughs> You know what else is subtle? I feel like I should have come from Jimmy Leg. He's not that subtle. No. You know what? Here's the problem with Jimmy Leg, right? He likes to do the ball busting, mm -hmm. but he doesn't know how to thread the needle. So new mm. people, it's just like, you know, that's just kind of a dick. Why are you even here? If you, yeah. Right? He doesn't thread the needle to give like the tongue and cheek. He doesn't none. give the wink. Yeah. It's just like, it just looks like there's a dick that's always hanging around. <laughs> Jimmy Third Leg. <laughs> Here's to firing, stealing, and drinking. I really want to know what Jimmy's reputation is on every other YouTube channel. What, like, what, like when he finds his people. You know what I mean? Where they're all nerding out about things. What do they call them on those channels? Probably not Jimmy Third Leg. <laughs> if you find me and fight for a friend. You steal, you steal your leather, sorry. And if you drink, may you drink with us. <laughs>